no Alex Morgan, no Megan Rapinoe, no Kristen Pest, no Tobin Heath, no Julie Ertz. Those okay. are huge, huge, huge names. names. Huge names. But here's what we know about this period after the Olympics. This is transition time. You have a gap where you have to go younger. And because of COVID, it's a shortened gap. Five months until those World Cup qualifiers that double as the Olympic qualifiers. So Black Wendonovsky is thinking, I have to see younger players, and I have to see them right now. This team is getting younger. It is also getting faster. We expect to see quite a bit of that speed in the starting 11 tonight. Here it is in a 4-3-3. Julie Casey Murphy getting the start at the back over Alyssa Nair. And what a first two games. This is only her third cap for the United States. Uh, great performance in Australia. That back line, a new one. You're seeing the midfield. Andy Sullivan sitting in with Ertz out. Lavelle and Gatra getting her first start. Morgan Gatra since November of 2019. And that front three that everyone has wanted to see. Katerina Macario back and healthy playing in Lyon. Having a great season over there. Pew and Smith alongside her. And that is a very young 11 for the United States. Yeah, in fact, it's the youngest starting 11 we've seen for the U.S. since April of 2018. Let's transition to the opponent tonight, the Czech Republic. They've never qualified for a World Cup. They've never qualified for Olympics. They've never even qualified for a European championship. Yet, if you look at where their players are playing and some recent results, yeah. it's definitely, Julie, a program on the rise. Yeah, and they're a program that's fighting to get into the World Cup right now. They're so close. They just missed out on Euros. And so this 11 is a pretty consistent 11 for the Czech Republic. They're in third place in their group C and pay particular attention to Katarina Svitkova on that right hand side, the number 10. She plays for West Ham in the Women's Super League, having a great season, three time Czech player of the year. But this is a team that's going to be compact, going to be organized, and in a low block. So it's going to be tough for the United States to break them down. Some impressive results last year. They drew twice against the Netherlands. They even earned a scoreless draw against the now Olympic gold medal champions, Canada. Coming up, it's the second of six games at the 2022 She Believes Cup from Dignity Health Sports Park in Carson, California. It's the United States versus the Czech Republic. First half kickoff when we return. coverage of the 2022 She Believes Cup. Tonight's aerial coverage will be provided by Goodyear with you for every mile on the road to greatness. Goodyear, more driven. With Julie Foudy, I'm Sebastian Salazar as we get set for the U.S. Women's National Team's opening match at this year's She Believes Cup against the Czech Republic. Kelly O'Hara captaining the Stars and Stripes tonight. Petra Bertoldova, her opposing number for the Czech Republic. Julie, we talked about it in the open. So many big names not with this team. It's going to be weird to look at the U.S. without names like Rapino, Heath, Press, and Morgan in the 11. Yeah, but let's not panic because that's not saying they're out of this <laughs> roster. Well, out of this roster, out of this team, they're just not on this roster. So this is a, a balance and a dance that Black Wondonofsky is going to have to play between how many of these young kids are going to come in, help the team, and of course, as he said over and over, I know right now what I can get from those four. Julie Ertz still trying to get back from some injury. Sam Mew is trying to get back from some injury with her knee. So Crystal Dunn is pregnant. Three others that are missing of the mix. So a very young team indeed, but a lot of excitement about this younger group because as everyone has talked about, this is the transition time when you have to start building that younger group in. First match of the She Believes Cup took place earlier today in this very building. Iceland beating New Zealand by a final score of 1-0. The goal from Dagny Brynja's daughter in the first minute. Actually, the earliest goal in She Believes Cup history. Much less history between these two sides. This just the second ever meeting between the two. The first an American victory back in 2000. 22 years later, the rematch. United States, Czech Republic, She Believes Cup from Carson, California. Huge year for the American women, World Cup and Olympic qualifying. Coming up in just a few months. 
The battle for roster spots well and truly on under the manager Vladko Andonovsky. And we're underway from Dignity Health Sports Park, Czech Republic. All white kit going right to left on your screen. The Americans in the red and blue going left to right. Kelly O'Hara, the captain tonight, with her first touch at the right back position. Alana Cook and Tierna Davidson. New look center back pairing for so long. It's been Becky Sauerbrunn and Abby Dahlkemper. Davidson's pass intercepted. Anna Laskova wearing the number two will put it back in play. The right back for the Czech Republic. Place her ball for Sparta Prague. Ball whipped into the middle, no problem there for the six foot one, Casey Murphy. As we mentioned off the top, just the third cap and start for Casey Murphy. Her first two coming in Australia in November. And what a pair of games that was for the young goalkeeper. Sophia Smith checking back from her spot at the right wing. The American number 11 getting her first touches. Davidson under pressure now, Cook. Smith driving at the Czech defense. Half cleared. Morgan Gautrao. Davidson, direct. She's found O'Hara. O'Hara across. Barbara Votikova the save. And that's the ball the U.S. is going to be looking for all night. They know the Czech Republic wants to sit in this low block. It's a very organized 4-4-2. But when they can get that quick switch to an outside back getting forward and get some numbers forward, shift that back line a little bit, that's success for the U.S. Teresa Krajcirikova, the number 11, battling on the far side, ball out of bounds. It'll belong to the Americans. Rose Lavelle ahead for Mallory Pugh. Pugh, one time ball in. Trouble for the Czech goalie, kept out. Macario hunting. Still U.S. ball through Sullivan. O'Hara with a chance to cross. She does so, Macario in there, snapping header. Macario again. Czechs hanging on by a very thin thread. Usual bit of mistake by Vodikova in goal. The PSG goalkeeper almost gets caught there against the bar. Good ball in by Malpew, and here's the second look. Vodikova, one of a few players on this Czech team, he plays outside the domestic league. As we mentioned, for Paris Saint-Germain in France. She'll put it back in play now. Yeah, when I was talking to the Czech Republic coach, Rada, and said, how are things growing in your country for women's soccer? His comment was, in the past, we only had maybe one, maybe two players that were playing outside of our country, and typically in German, in the lower leagues. Now we've got six 
playing in really good leagues. Botikova is one of them with PSGs we just mentioned. Svitkova with West Ham. Kamila Dubsova. Dubsova playing in Serie A. So that is the experience that they were hoping to get with this team. Lavelle opening up her pass off the mark. Intercepted by Glaskova. But the Americans retain possession. Czech team, a program on the rise. They just missed qualifying for the upcoming European Championships, losing in a heartbreaking playoff against the Swiss. Ugh. Third time in the playoffs, where they, they're so close to getting into the European Championships. They've got a huge World Cup qualifier coming up in April against Iceland, one of the teams in this tournament. See if they can make their way into the playoff for a spot in Australia in 2023. Emily Fox picks his out. Macario. Beautiful stuff from Pew. Checks backpedaling at every turn. US dominating possession, still looking for an opener. Clara Tsakhinova. Ahead. Cook under some pressure. She'll go back to Casey Murphy. As you mentioned, her third cap tonight for the US. Goalie for the North Carolina Courage in the NWSL. Yep. Rose, Rose Here, the call from Vladko Andonovsky. Rose early, she's got it now. Lavelle into the middle, Lavelle on her left. You can see with Rose Lavelle and Morgan Gatra playing in that higher position in front of Andy Sullivan in midfield. They have the freedom in that seam, that second seam, to roam and find the ball and pop wide and interchange with those forwards. And I think that's something with Kat Macario that as you, is a layer, actually, that she brings to this team. Because Kat Macario is very comfortable popping into the midfield seam, plays a lot of time in midfield. So playing in that nine, she's going to play often as a false nine, come back in, and Rose Lavelle will switch in with her into that higher position. Fox down the left flank. Pass one, pass two, still Emily Fox. All the way through the penalty area to Kelly O'Hara. Laces one, and didn't miss by much. The Americans knocking on the door. Again, a good sign for the US team when they're getting both their outside backs engaged in this game. And this is what Emily Fox can do. We've seen her do it at UNC Chapel Hill. We've seen her do it with the youth national team and now getting the confidence to do it at this level as well. Smith wins a one-on-one -on -one battle. Still Sophia Smith. Smith. Huge touch from Botikova. First corner kick of the matchup coming for the United States. Sophie Smith loves to run at that back line. Gets both of those center backs to bike. Botikova with a huge touch to keep the Czech Republic clean. Five Americans in the box. Pew the service, well-driven ball. Can't find a U.S. target. Fox steers backward, now Davidson. O'Hara. Will it stay in? Yes. Chance at the back post for Smith. Nervy first few minutes for the United States, and now you can see the momentum shift. Good ball in. I thought Gatra was going to get a touch on that. Rose Lavelle just everywhere. Smith wanting to get a hold of that. Didn't connect on it. Vladko Anonofsky, two-time NWSL champion, two-time NWSL coach of the year. 
Won 80% of his games since taking over this job in late 2019. Camila Dupsova showing her class. Sakinova. Gabriela Schleisova, the number five. For the Czech Republic applying the pressure. Czechs turning the Americans over. But a whistle from our center ref, Laura Fortunato of Argentina. And that is going to be the challenge for the Czech Republic because anytime they try and establish some sort of rhythm, there's going to be a high pressure and red jerseys around them trying to disrupt that. Katarina Svitkova, the number 10. Their string puller hardly has had a touch so far here through the opening 11 minutes. Yeah, it's interesting because for West Ham, she can play in that more centralized 10 role. When we've seen her with the national team, she's always in a wide role, sometimes on the right, sometimes on the left. But here's the no thing you know about Svitkova. She can crank it from all distances. And she did that against the Dutch in their last qualifier. I mean, they're right in it, Sevi, with one of the best teams in the world in the Netherlands. The Dutch had to come back twice in their last two World Cup qualifiers to just salvage a point. One in the 93rd minute, the, the next, Miedema in the 82nd minute. So this is a team that's getting closer and they can feel it. And as Coach Rada said, these are the games that are perfect for us because you're playing the best in the world. Rada has been in charge since 2017. Quite an accomplished player in his own right. Part of the Czech Republic national team that finished second at the 1996 European Championships. A reminder, we've got two more She Believes Cup games coming your way. First on Sunday, it's the United States against New Zealand, that match on ABC. And then the final match for the US, Wednesday against Iceland. Ball driven in here, Valtikova handles cleanly. Taking over after turnover. Morgan Gotrao fighting off a couple Czech midfielders. Cook. Fox one time falls for Macario. Fox again. U.S. bossing the ball, still looking through a breakthrough. 14 minutes in. O'Hara quickly off her feet. Smith. S Smith. Well cut out by Simona Netsidova. Fox for Lavelle. Half clearance after half clearance for the Czechs. Loving the range of Rose Lavelle right now, all over that, that front third. Smith one on one. Now two on one.
Smith, six goals last season for the Portland Thorns. She was the number one pick in the 2020 NWSL draft. Actually, Julie, the first player born in the 2000s to play mm. for the U.S. Women's National Team. Mm -hmm. Makes me feel young. Silva showing her quality. Andrea Stashkova, the number nine, big target in there for the Czechs. Lucia Martinkova. And the 35-year-old whistled for the foul on Morgan Gotrao. Martinkova up front with Stashkova. Stashkova's the number nine playing high. Haven't been even calling her name much, but this is a player with height who can play, who can hold the ball, who can get in, who can score. So getting Stashkova a little bit more involved. Number nine for Czech Republic is gonna be critical for their success. There she is. ESPN's coverage of U.S. Soccer is presented by the all-electric Volkswagen ID4. Stashkova, I should mention, plays for Juventus. So another player they love to see playing abroad, getting that experience. No professional league in the Czech Republic as of yet, they said. Stashkova wins the header. But loses out in the battle to Cook. Few slammed into from behind, but the offside flag up. Mallory Pew second in NWSL MVP voting last year behind the winner Jess Fishlock. Well, remember she was on the Olympic team in 2016, World Cup squad in 2019, but not on the Olympic team last year. Getting herself back into the national team picture through her play with the Chicago Red Stars. It's great to see her confident, happy, smiling again, enjoying it. She's put so much work in. Still so young as well when you think about it, 23 years old for Mal Pugh. Look at Smith fighting her way out of a triple team. Andy Sullivan, captain of the NWSL champion Washington Spirit. Lavelle now. Sullivan. <laughs> Quarter hour down. What do you think so far from the younger players, Julie? I, I, I like it. I think it's, it's going to be a good test for them because of this compact, organized block that they're throwing in front of them. Clearly have had the looks. Now it's okay. As the Czech Republic gets a little bit more confidence, maybe a little bit more rhythm, and they haven't scored, how do they deal with that? The frustration of playing a bunker can sometimes set in. Nearly 70% possession right now for the U.S. Sophia Smith called for the foul. You could hear a couple of them on, on the field saying patience, patience. And yes, you want patience, but you also have to move the ball fast enough that you're shifting defenses when they're playing in that bunker. And so recognizing what the game calls for is going to be the things that Vlako Andonovsky is looking for. And who's going to be the game changer in that moment that can use a little creative skill to beat a few players, get in, score. But in complete 
command of this game. Roosevelt holding out as long as she could before the foul called. Interesting talking to Becky Sauerbrunn about Vladko Andonovsky yesterday. She, of course, started to work with him way back in 2013. She said in their first meeting, he told her he was going to be a national team coach in 10 years, and it only took him eight. <laughs> O'Hara wandering She's... to the opposite flank. She said, OK, thanks. I'm Becky. <laughs> she goes, yeah, you knew it early. We also asked Becky about how it's been with this whole younger group here. Lavelle, Lavelle. Caught it clean, huge block from Bertoldova. Brave defending from the Czech number four. We said, how is it with all the youngsters? And Becky Sauerbrunn said, tangible energy was the quote. Tangible energy, and she laughed. First minute dangerous set piece here for the U.S. Women's National Team. Pugh and Macario standing over it. Lavelle in the wall, four American targets just outside the penalty area. Let's make it five with Andy Sullivan. Is this in range for Macario, Julie? This is in range for Macario. She's been red hot for Leon, the 22 year old. Macario over the bar. Well, Chikova will know Macario having played against Leon earlier this season. Actually, PSG beat them 3 0, which is why Macario could not come back. Just doesn't quite get it to dip enough on that one. But that game was why Macario wasn't back in January. She was injured in November. Couldn't play in the Australian matches either. And so Vlako and Anofsky and the staff have been waiting to see Kat Macario in that nine position. She was, of course, born in Brazil and moved to the U.S. at age 12. It was only 13 months ago that she got FIFA clearance to represent the United States. That was on January 13th, 2021. Five days later, she made her debut. Gives you an idea of just how quickly she's become a big part of this team. U.S. set to defend a set piece now. 23rd minute. Murphy's going to have to come forward. She does and collects competently. Awfully high line for the United States, but when you have six foot two Casey Murphy behind you, who's so good on those balls coming across in the air. You can set that high line. Six foot one, I gave her an extra inch. Never hurts. She'll appreciate that. Actually, if you look at the rest of the American goalie pool, pretty much everybody else is 5'9". So in that one area, she's got a big advantage. So good, too, on those aerial balls swinging in, whipped in. That's where that Australia game, that 3-0 first win, eight huge saves against a very good team in your debut mm. with the national team. I said, how did that feel? And she said, you know what? I, I couldn't even be nervous <laughs> because I, the game was so crazy. I didn't have a chance to think about the nerves. Macario makes the ref. <laughs> Sophia Smith passed one into the box. Still Smith. Smith. Kotikova, another big save as the Czech Republic keeps it scoreless for now. Every time Sophia Smith face up, look what she wants to do. She wants to draw one. She beats one. She wants to draw another. That's how you pull a bunker apart. A little bit unlucky on that one. Kotiva, Kotikova on that near post, cutting that angle, but it's that mentality that's going to beat a bunker, and that's what Sophia Smith wants to do all day. Sakinova turning away from pressure. 
Loops them all the way for Botikova. O'Hara to Cook to Davidson. Three out of four on the back line. Played their college ball at Stanford. Since you mentioned it. I'm shocked it was me and not you. Six of the 11 starters tonight. Me. Did we get that stat in yet? <laughs> from the fine institution of Stanford University. That's it, I'm done. U.S. building through midfield. A reminder, Major League Soccer on ESPN is back, kicking off the season with the LA Galaxy, hosting New York City FC right here in Carson, California. You can catch the action on Sunday, February 27th, 4.30 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN. Skoba, pressured by Pew. Stashkova. Using her big frame to harass the American defenders. Fox loses out. Mm, unlucky for Czech Republic, because mm. Dubshova sitting on that ball waiting. with that pressure. And the first time you've seen Spikov on that Spikov on that left side just about a minute ago, they isolated her against Kelly O'Hara. Kelly O'Hara doing a good job of not letting her around that corner. But that's the opportunity Czech Republic needs to take. They need to go when they get their opportunities. Here's another look. Martinkova leading the charge. Martinkova double team. Botrao ahead for Macario. Macario keeps it for the U.S. Lavelle, dangerous here. From distance, she's gone for it! <laughs> Botikova living dangerously, Lavelle testing her. Yes. See Rose Lavelle take that little look. She glances. Let's see if we can catch it here. I think she sees Votikova off her line. There it is. Takes that little look and says, why not? Almost gets her. There it is. That's a good look. I'd say try that all day if you're Rose Lavelle. Well, making her 69th international appearance, 18 international goals to her credit. Here she is, turning up the defense. It's a battle. And finally, the whistle goes. It'll be American ball. Lavelle, of course, from Cincinnati, Ohio. You made me ask her about the Super Bowl in our call <laughs> yesterday. I think she... Uh, she used the word gut-wrenching and heartbreaker. She had to leave the room at one point, right? Because Kelly O'Hara was <laughs> rooting for the Rams. Macario into the box. Macario! Votikova stands tall at the near post. Finally, Macario finding a little bit of space, and that's just picked up from mistake from Czech Republic. But that's the movement of Macario. She just needs a little window. Good save by Votikova. Laura Fortunato clearing up some pushing and shoving in the box. Swinger. 
Andy Sullivan at the back post. Close to an opener. Andy Sullivan finds herself wide open on that back post, trying to glance it in almost as if she tried to guide it a little too much. Sullivan, one of those players trying to break through. Still hasn't played in her first major tournament with the United States. You gotta think one of the last players left off the Tokyo Olympic team. And now fighting for minutes at that number six spot, which is a huge position, Julie, for this team. Yeah, and with Julie Ertz still being out, getting some consistent time in there. It's been Andy Sullivan. That's been the woman who Black Wondonovsky and the player he's gone to with Ertz out. Haran a little bit as well, but they love to have Haran a little bit higher with her creativity. Bertoldova fires it down the line. Good fight from Emily Fox. Botrao. Fox taking down play on, says the referee. Botrao wins it right back. U.S. is not want it, wanting to go in into that locker room at halftime without something on the board from this possession. And this is what Czech Republic does to teams. They lure you, they lure you. You can play as much as you want in this space. They don't care, they're gonna give that. But breaking them down in that final third is a different story. And this is how they hold on with teams. This is what they've done against the Dutch in their last two qualifiers, getting a point from each game. But that's why this is a good test for this young group today for the United States. This is the seventh edition of the She Believes Cup. The U.S. have won four of the first six, including the last two. The only times the Americans didn't win their own tournament, 2017, that was France, 2019, that was England. Cario turning up the press. Emily Fox. Oh, Lavelle, the class. Still Rose. O'Hara whipped in. And that was a great example of the pairing that Vlako Andonovsky wants to see with Lavelle and Kat Macario. When Kat Macario jumps into midfield, Rose is going high, and there's a fluidity between those two. Checks trying to spring a counter attack. Cook covers cleanly. Build up for the United States. Now the ball comes in. They're pulled by the header away. Lavelle for Fox. Can she get there? Yes. Matching back heels eventually snuffed out by the Czech defense. Emily Fox coming off a great rookie season with Racing Louisville number one pick in the 2021 NWSL draft. Julie, no matter who we talk to, when the question is, who's impressed you most recently? 
Fox was at the top of most people's yeah. list, wasn't she? Yeah. She is. It's so it's true. And and so impressive on both sides of the ball. So calm under pressure when she's got the ball. Good at getting forward. It's been great defensively. Laskova. Cook with a key intervention. Uh, Stashkova was lurking at the penalty spot. Svitkova. Seven minutes in, still no score for the United States. It's their first game of the 2022 She Believes Cup. Next up for the Americans, New Zealand on Sunday. And Iceland next week. Those two teams playing earlier today. Iceland with a 1-0 victory. Gabriela Schleiskova. Smith ahead for Macario. Macario passed everybody. That one long touch cost her the opportunity. Nothing easy so far for the U.S. women's national team. Ends to check side, ranked 24th in the latest FIFA rankings. Sullivan. Good possession for the Czechs, eventually forced back. Seventeenth time the United States has played in Carson, California. The U.S. women perfect in their prior 16 appearances. Not a single defeat or draw. Again, this is what the Czech Republic wants, playing in that midfield space. Trow into the penalty area. A little bit better for the United States, but when Emily Fox gets into that corner, as she did one pass prior to that, facing up and taking on, they want you to go backwards with it. So getting Kelly O'Hara in that space, Fox in that space, and making them part of that offensive effort to turn the corner on him. Third corner of the game for the U.S. played short. Driven into the near post. Sullivan still. 
One on two. Corner kick number four coming up. Looks like Dubshova got the win knocked out of her, perhaps. Macario to provide the service in the 40th minute. Low driven ball, trouble here. Scrambled away by the visitors. LaBelle into the corner. LaBelle dancing away from defenders to the near post. U.S. turning up the pressure as we near the end of the first half. Having the confidence to do this. Czech Republic thinks Rose Lavelle's going backwards. No, turning it, creating something. But that's the last piece of the puzzle. Can they start finding players in those seams when they do turn that corner? Because it's too organized of a defense for Czech Republic to be hopeful in that box. Checks just trying to make it to halftime at zeros. Gotrau. Fox. Macario there couldn't corral it. Martinkova. Leading the checks. Tashkova, Martinkova, the offside flag up. Martinkova, 25 goals in her international career. This is her 114th senior appearance. Czech Republic's got to be thrilled going in at nil-nil at halftime. <laughs> right? That's a boost in itself. As we mentioned in the open, they've had some impressive results in the last 12 months. A couple draws against the Netherlands and a 0-0 against Canada, who are your reigning gold medal champions at the Olympics. Linnell gliding into the box for Macario. Fox trying to fight her way into the penalty area. Things getting physical. In the 44th minute, we finally get a whistle from the center ref. Zakhinova. Dupsova working against the double team. Across, not a threat for Murphy. Forty-fifth minute, we're told one minute of stoppage time here in the first half. Pew on her horse, chases it down on the far sideline. Pew, Macario. Mm. 
massive touch from Nezidova. Perfect opportunity trying to get the Czech Republic in transition. Just misses that first touch for Katarina Macario. Gets away from her a little bit too much. And that's been her night, just that touch. Not quite there for Katarina Macario. Getting herself in good positions, though. Macario. Oh, Tikova holds on. Seconds of the first half. Still scoreless between the United States and the Czech Republic. Lots of options, too, for Vlako Andonovsky to go to in that second half. Ashley Hatch, Midge Purse, Sanchez, Trinity Rodman, all of them on the bench, waiting for that moment. And the Americans need it. So far, unable to break through against the Czech defense. 45 minutes in the books in Carson, California. U.S. Czech Republic scoreless at the She Believes Cup. Plenty more to come at halftime. A reminder, ESPN's coverage of U.S. soccer is brought to you by Volkswagen. Welcome back to the 2022 She Believes Cup. Tonight's beautiful aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. With you for every mile on the road to greatness, Goodyear, more driven. Alongside Julie Foudy, I'm Sebastian Salazar as we take a look down on Dignity Health Sports Park in Carson, California. The United States and Czech Republic. Nothing between these two sides in the opening half, still scoreless. Julie, the United States will certainly be looking for an improved performance here in the second half. Yeah, and I think they've just got to be cleaner in front of goal. This is their first game of 2022, so it's to be expected. It's a young team. They were nervous. Completely dominated possession, as we saw. And really, the Czech Republic didn't threaten. But that's the thing with it being 0-0, as we know, and this Czech Republic team who can knock them in from distance. You want to get some separation. And so I think looking to be cleaner in that final third, getting those outside backs forward. Emily Fox with her service, getting over that first defender. They got to be whipping balls in. And even getting Kelly O'Hara a little more engaged on that right side. One thing we noticed at halftime Christy Mewis. Warming up. Looks like she'll be getting ready to check into the match, as well as Emily Sonnet. So Vladko Andonovsky will be making a couple changes here at halftime. Interesting that his first two moves are to go to two players with a little more experience. Maybe wanting to balance that out. Emily Fox coming off at left back. Morgan Gautreau off as well. Second half underway. Sonnet for Pew. Chasing down, service into the area. Mewis 
Vicario at the back post. Smith was lurking. She's got it now. What an immediate spark by those two, Sonnet and Mewis on their own. Right away, making a difference. Mewis getting forward. Almost getting on the end of that one. There it is, Sonnet's ball just coming up a little bit too short. Mewis keeps it alive, finds Macario and a really good seam. Almost over to the other side of Sophia Smith. Good start to the second half for the United States. Fifth corner of the game coming for the Americans. Oh, again. Nothing getting past the PSG goalie so far. And I think that's the added bonus of Christy Mewis in there is that you got two number 10s now with a double 10 with Rose and Mewis getting forward with the draw. She's going to be a settling possession type player, but she's not going to be getting as forward as much as Christy Mewis will. And right away, you see the difference. Krajčíkova, head for Stashkova. Martinkova lurking, shouts of a handball for the Czechs. All the way from up here, Sebastian, that looked like that hit the hand pretty cleanly. So, interesting no call. That could have been a game changer for the United States. American response, Peters out. Here's a look at it. Absolutely a handball. Laura Fortunato of Argentina heading the crew today. Class turn from U.S. O'Hara. Time service well off the mark. Kelly O'Hara making her 149th appearance for the United States. Krajcikova down the line. Martinkova. Not today, says Sullivan. Well held up from Macario. Cook pressing forward. O'Hara and Pew down the right flank. Pew one on one. Gets the service in. Bertoldova. Header out of bounds, another corner kick coming up for the U.S. Well down by Mal Pugh. Really good flashes from Pugh in this game. Low driven ball to the penalty spot, won by Sullivan. Davidson wide. Another brave header. Vlad Gondanovsky telling us about Kelly O'Hara's leadership style, said she was more the, the public leader. Becky Sauerman more the one-on-one -on -one meeting type leader. Yep. I always find it interesting how those duties kind of get split yeah. up. Yeah. Everyone's got their styles. They're like, oh, Kelly will tell you. She's going she's gonna to be more vocal about it. I love that. He also said she was one of the tactically savviest players in the group. Coming off an end 
NWSL championship season with the Washington Spirit. As we mentioned at halftime, she is one of just three Olympic starters, along with Roosevelt and Tierna Davidson, who started four of the six games in Tokyo that were included in tonight's opening 11. Beautiful build up the shot though, right at Botikova. That's the pairing we keep seeing tonight with Macario and Rose Lavelle. Andonovsky very conscious of pairings. He brings them in together, he subs them out together. It's something he talks about a lot. And that's one that he's had his eyes on. He's gonna be pleased with that. Has yet to produce a goal, but a lot of good chances from those two. Smith with the interception. Macario turns and delivers. Pressure from Pew. Dumping Stashkova. Check forward, holding her left leg. The 21 year old plays for Juventus. And she's come off worse for the wear after that collision with Tierna Davidson. It's that initial contact with Tierna coming in. Saw it on her left ankle. Oh, those hurt. Here is the last look for the, the United States. That ball in by Macario to find Rose Lavelle has a window. But Tikova, so good with her positioning, makes it look easy to save. Constantly finding herself in a good position. Sonnet leading the attack down the left flank. Few with Mewis overlapping. Still getting treatment at the near sideline. Checks a player down in the meantime. Short corner. Davidson. Good delivery to the back post. Votikova again. Gathers on the second effort. Barbaro Votikova. Four saves tonight, dominating the penalty area. As the U.S. still struggling to break through as we creep closer and closer to the hour mark. Checks back to full strength. Dashkova back on the field. Nakario checking back to receive.
ESPN's coverage of U.S. soccer is brought to you by Volkswagen. Lavelle into the corner. Oh, -ho. magic to the near post, Macario. Last touched by the American striker. U.S. players thinking that was a corner coming off the Czech Republic defender. I don't disagree with them. I think this should be a corner call, but look at the magic of Rose Lavelle finding a little space. Lavelle wins the header. Huge year coming up for the U.S. women, the CONCACAF W Championship. Coming up in July, that'll be played in Monterey, Mexico. As you mentioned, Julie, it'll serve as both World Cup and Olympic qualifying. The top four teams in that tournament go directly to the next World Cup. Only the winner will get the direct ticket to the 2024 Olympic Games. It's an eight-team tournament. The U.S. and Canada have already qualified. Love that they pick Monterrey in Mexico, where both <laughs> Tigres and Rayadas have been redefining the women's game in Liga MX Femenil. If the crowds, those two teams get her any indication, it should be a very well supported yeah. tournament. Those are fun games, aren't they? Chaos at the back for the Americans. Casey Murphy with a spot on save at the near post. Speaking of fun games, we've got a big one for you this coming weekend. Real Madrid hosting Alaves on Saturday. That one, 2.30 p.m. Eastern time on ABC, ESPN Deportes, and ESPN Plus. A reminder, ESPN Plus is your home for La Liga. Every match in English and in Espanol. This game suddenly opening up a little bit. Getting a little chippy as well. Good touch by Christy Mewis to break free from that line. The only thing Czech Republic can do with that extension is foul her. With a free kick from a similar spot in the first half, and again, it was Macario and Pugh standing over it. Macario's effort then went over the bar. Zakhinova in the books for the Czech Republic. Macario. Bends it up and over the wall, but not enough on it to trouble Votikova. God, I think some frustration starting to set in on that near sideline as Vlatko Andonovsky prepares a couple more subs. There you see Trinity Rodman and Margaret Midge Purse. Rodman potentially moments away from her senior national team debut. The NWSL Rookie of the Year last season with the Washington Spirit. Purse. First third in last year's NWSL MVP voting. Playing for Gotham FC, and here are those changes. Rodman in for Pew, her first ever appearance with the U.S. women's national team. Sophia Smith off as well. Purse takes her place. So Macario stays in that nine with Rodman and Purse now fresh legs on either side of her.
Two changes at the half for Vlad Goyanovsky, two on the hour mark. Let's see if these are the ones that unlock the game for the United States. Kelly O'Hara. So much excitement around the 19-year-old and Trinity Rodman. And rightfully so, they're trying to temper it, and as they should if you're U.S. soccer. But this is a player who can take on, who's got skills, who's good in the air, who can score in different ways, who's got pace, who can stretch defenses. I mean, she's got all the elements, decided not to go to Washington State and instead play for the Washington Spirit, where, as you said, Sebastian, rookie of the year of the NWSL, seven goals, led the league in assists with seven assists as a rookie. And just a kid, really, still a teenager. Got a big new contract for her efforts. Four-year deal worth over a million dollars. Which is great to see, because in the past, WSL hasn't been able to give those contracts. What happens is we lose them to other leagues. So in an effort to keep your young stars here at home, part of that CBA negotiation as well for the NWSL, their first ever CBA. All good signs of progress. Rodman, an NWSL best 11 pick as well. She was actually originally brought into this group as a training player, only added to the She Believes Cup roster after Abby Dahlkemper was injured. Still, though, for all the American talent, no goals here in Carson, California. U.S. looking at a disappointing draw in their She Believes Cup opener. Anna Dlaskova. It's a throw in. And the check number two will get another crack at it in the 63rd minute. Inova's cross battered out of bounds. Corner kick coming for the visitors. And this is where the U.S. has to be careful with this young team. You, you flip off for five, ten seconds on a set piece like this, Czech Republic will punish you for it. And you're looking at a game where you've held most of the possession, most of the opportunities, and yet the scoreboard reflects none of that. Great Chirikova. Short for Zvitkova. Krajcinikova with a chance. Drives it wide. Murphy was there anyway. There is that short corner. Mitch Purse got has to clear it because those are the kind of mistakes. That will eat you up. Mistakes compounding for the U.S. now. As the Czechs take over deep in American territory. Again, this is a Czech side that has never in their history qualified for a major tournament. Giving the U.S. all they can handle. Sullivan calm out of pressure. Sonnet under it. Savvy move from the veteran left back. O'Hara. Mewis. Lavelle. Tikova at the near post as the Americans close in. Again, the combo of Katarina Macario coming into midfield. Rose Lavelle, look how Kat checks into that space. Instead, Rose Lavelle 
goes into the space that Macario just left. It's that movement from that two that's been so good. The final piece of it is they just can't get it by Vodikova. Macario working as a 10 for Lavelle. Lavelle on the left. Tried to pick out the upper corner and didn't miss by much. Lavelle so quick with her turn. See, she has space. Good first touch, sets it up, takes a look. This is the moment in the game where you think, okay, who is it that's going to strap this game onto their back and say, without the veterans there, you have Kelly O'Hara with some experience, Sonnet with some experience, Rose Lavelle with some experience, but largely missing as we've talked about this entire game, that core of group, who is going to take charge in this moment? And that's exactly what the staff is looking at. Chance for the U.S. to counter. Macario over the top. Rodman and Purse giving chase. Bertoldova out of the corner. And a few options, she puts it out of play. Macario working one on three, losing out. U.S. reclaim possession. Beautiful pass. Rodman! Votikova standing tall again, but the offside flag was up. Rodman limping Lavelle down. Talented player, but a long injury history, so obviously concerned. Let's take another look. This ball by Christy Mewis. Looks like she's in an onside position to me. And then this first touch by Trinity Rodman. Wow. Botikova again off her line. Positioning is just so good. But the ball in, and there's the Rose Lavelle injury on the other side. That started the play. Lavelle back up. That first touch by Trinity Rodman to clear that line. Mm, how about the pass? Still, though, whether the assistant referee or Votikova, the Americans, saw their hopes spoiled. Six subs allowed for both these teams in this match. The U.S. have used four. That would have been something on essentially Trinity Robbins' first touch with the national team. I think it was about her first touch if she had put that one into the back of the net. I feel like you and I have been waiting for her to make that debut for months. We've been talking about this player. When's she finally going to break through with the national team? Could have hardly acted surprised if she scored just minutes after coming on on her debut. It's similar to how her professional career started at the club yeah, level. Yeah, exactly. What was it? Four minutes in? Something like that, yep. Sensational year. The number two overall draft pick of the Washington Spirit. Here she is. Rodman across. Stays in for O'Hara. Makes O'Hara into the box. And across, let her down. Votikova at the near post. We got to give some credit to Votikova because she's just been so good. Positioning, making.
making things look easy, cleaning up balls, cleaning up messes. Two more substitutes being prepared on the near sideline. Becky Sauerbrunn and Ashley Sanchez approaching the fourth official. Macario out wide. Again, that switch. Macario coming into midfield. Rose Lavelle assuming the nine position. That interchange so tough for defense to track. So it'll be Rose Lavelle that comes off in favor of Ashley Sanchez in the 72nd minute. Meanwhile, Becky Sauerbrunn replacing Tierna Davidson in the center of defense. This is Sauerbrunn's 200th appearance for the U.S. Women's National Team. Just the 12th player ever to reach that milestone. It's fantastic. Fantastic. So happy for her. Sullivan leaps for the header. Sonnet. Still alive in the box. Checks can only clear it as far as Sauerbrunn. Purse. Wadman running. Couldn't find her. Sonnet. Sullivan. Sonnet. Trinity Rodman wide open in the box. Perfect cross from Sonnet as the Spirit teammates hook up. But again, Votikova cannot be beaten. Here's a look at it. Sonnet finding Rodman a perfect ball. She gets a lot on it. On frame, great technique. Just ends up right at that goalkeeper. Votikova, again, positionally, so good and clean. Starting goalkeeper for PSG, as we said, tons of experience. Julie, while there's a break here, maybe an opportunity to address some off-field issues. We've still got the ongoing equal pay litigation between the team in the Federation. We also have the current collective bargaining agreement between the two set to end in late March. Uh, we did speak to Becky Sauerbrunn, who's the first U.S. Women's National Team PA president, and she sounded optimistic on both fronts, yeah. so maybe some hope I, there. And it's actually, I will say, it's the first time from all sides, mm -hmm. Federation, men, women, there's been optimism that they're going to get there. And they all say, because you know what? No one's signing a contract that's not equal. Mm. We're all on the same page in that. Now it's just hashing out the details of that. So that's a good sign. And they are working around the clock trying to get that done. In particular, that player with 200 caps, Becky Sauerbrunn, doing a lot of the work. I mean, it is indeed a collective effort. But Becca Roo, the head of the Women's Players Association, saying she has taken on a load and just been available to do it all. So props to Becky and this team for continuing that. Speaking of CBAs, the NWSL just getting a new CBA as well. Huge increase in the league minimum, better benefits for players, a potential for a share of TV revenue down the road, so. A free agency. Huge strides for women's soccer domestically. Mental health leave for six months. I mean, there was some really good advancements in that. Perhaps a light at the end of the tunnel after a dark 2021 for the National Women's Soccer League. Rodman's header mistimed. Offside flag up on the far sideline. Quarter hour left here, Julie. Still no goals for the United States. 
And you're seeing the fresh legs make an immediate impact. Rodman on that left side, Mitch Purse on the right, Christy Mewis coming in as well in midfield, making those runs out of midfield. Will it be enough? Vladko Andonovsky has used all six of his subs. It's down to the 11 players on the field for the United States to break this tie. Svitkova in a foot race with Sullivan. Ball belongs to the Czechs. Offside down this end as well. Casey Murphy to put it back in play for the U.S. Just her third cap for the 25-year-old goalie for the North Carolina Courage. What did Vlatko tell us last night? She's starting, but she's not the starter. <laughs> yeah, and good news, Alyssa Nair back healthy and available for the first time since the Olympics. That knee injury in the Olympics, she's just recovering from. So that's gonna be a position to watch as well. Lots of decisions to be made in the coming months. And not many windows, honestly, to take a look. You've got the April window where they got two games, you've got the June window. But as Vlatko has said repeatedly, the biggest thing he wants to see, and especially from that veteran group that's not in, is how are they performing at the club level? Ashley Sanchez. Wouldn't have mattered. Play dead for offside. Which brings me to another topic, Julie Ertz, because if you need to be seen at the club level, this is Sanchez getting in on the other side. Another close one. That one off. I do not think Trinity Rodman was off, even though it was saved regardless. A couple changes coming here for the Czech Republic. Franny Cherna enters the match with a number 22, as does Michaela Kirova. Coming up next, after the end of our match, Sports Center. None other than Scott Van Pelt covering all the latest from across the world of sports. So back to the Julie Ertz situation. Vlatko has said from that veteran group, he wants to see them perform at the club level before he's going to bring them back in. And right now, Angel City has the rights to Julie Ertz, but Julie Ertz doesn't look like she's gonna be playing for Angel City. So where that leaves her with the national team is to remain to be seen, but... Mm. I mean, it's hard to imagine a player in this national team that wasn't engaged at the club level. No, and I don't think you can make that exception for one player, can you? And, and then ask it of the others. So it will be interesting to see what happens there because that's a player that they want on the field. Yeah. I mean, Ertz for so long was almost the first name on the team sheet in that number six spot. U.S. pinging it around the back despite the high press from the Czech Republic. Sanchez dribbling out of pressure. Beautiful breakout here. O'Hara with time and space on the far side. O'Hara to the middle. Macario one on one. Macario double teamed. Sullivan. Sonnet one time. Oh 
81st minute, less than 10 to play at Dignity Health Sports Park. First of three for the U.S. at the She Believes Cup, and it is not going to plan. Tied at zero right now with the 24th ranked team in the world, the Czech Republic. Major League Soccer on ESPN is back, kicking off the season with the LA Galaxy hosting New York City FC from right here in this building. Catch all the action on Sunday, February 27th, 4.30 p.m. Eastern time. That one starts on ESPN. Meanwhile, here the U.S. running out of time. Looks like we'll have a set piece here in the 82nd minute for the Czechs. Katerina Svitkova. Drives it right at Murphy. I, I think she turned to Coach Rada and said, what do you think? Look at Casey Murphy off her line. Right, because she can strike it from a distance. She just didn't quite get all of that ball, but that's what she was looking for. Should I go for a coach? Why not? Always going to take something special to beat Murphy from there. American goalie working on yet another clean sheet. Saubron, Sanchez, for Rodman. Great understanding between those two from their Washington Spirit playing days. You got to give the Czech Republic a ton of credit on how they've been able to just battle in that final third. Sonnet, this is trouble. Votikov on the punch, only as far as purse. And now look out. Stashkova, two on one if she hustles. Cool, calm, collected. Sauerbrunn there to save the day. Big win from Sakhinova. Cherna. Svitkova. Svitkova again. You can hear the thud as her shot was blocked by the American back line. Svitkova wants it on her left. Macario for Purse. Look out, she's got speed to burn. Beautiful switch for Rodman. Trinity with options in the box. Macario posting up. Clever hold up play from the American nine. O'Hara thought about it from distance. Now driving to the corner. Checks tiring as we approach the final five minutes of this match. Is now the time for the American breakthrough. Rodman. Another counter for the Czechs. Stashkova, one on three, Murphy tips it over, 
Looked like the American goalie got a touch. Not according sure to the referees. That's what the Czech Republic thinks as well. Here's another look at it. Stashkova holding up the ball so well. I thought she was going to rip it herself. Inside, decides I'm going to lay it off. Hard to tell from that angle, but it looks like she got a touch on it. And this is when in these last five minutes, you just got to get gritty. Hit mm. that ball in there, get some numbers in there. Slide it in and put numbers around that second ball. And right now the service from the flanks isn't, it's not clearing that first, second defender sometimes. Hasn't been good enough tonight all around, I think, from that flank area. Eighty seventh minute, Macario checking back. Game opening up in the final minutes. Look wide for O'Hara. All 10 U.S. field players on the Czech side of the park. Rodman back to goal. Hack down, play on, says the referee. Sanchez delivery. O'Hara, Votikova holding on. What a game for the Czech goalkeeper. <laughs> Sonnet double team. Svitkova. on it, forcing the turnover. Americans back on the ball through Rodman. Now Macario. Purse controls on the edge of the area. Yeah. 89th minute. What a huge result this would be for the Czech Republic. What a disappointing result it would be for the Americans. Macario. Sanchez one on one. Substitution coming now for the Czech Republic. Klara Svichkova will enter the match. Replacing Andrea Stashkova. Huge effort from the Czech number nine tonight. working against the Americans. We're told four minutes, four minutes of stoppage time. That's all that's left for the U.S. Women's National Team. Sonnet. Tries to go one-on-one, -on -one, can't beat the defender. Iceland beating New Zealand earlier in the day. So should this result hold, the United States would be tied for second in the She Believes Cup ahead of Sunday's matches.
Sanchez out of trouble with Sullivan. 91st minute. For as much possession as the United States has, as many looks as they have, the one thing they're going to look back on is, okay, where do we need to get better? And that's in that final third. It's in the final pass. And it's in the finishing. They're all in preseason outside of Kat Macario, who's in the middle of her season. That's a good reminder. Beyond being young, they're still trying to get sharp and fit in their first game of 2022. So giving them a little bit of room for that. But they're going to look at this and think, ah, oh, this is a game they should have had in hand with so many looks. Props to Vodikova and the performance she's had in goal tonight. But a good reminder for this young team, there is work to be done. And there's a sharpness in front of goal that just wasn't there tonight. One more change coming for the Czechs. Kamila Dubsova. Off in favor of the number eight. Aneta Pochmanova. Great, great game by Dubšová in midfield. And lots to be proud of if you're the Czech Republic on a team that's really on the verge of this tipping point and trying to get over that hurdle of making it to a World Cup, making it to a European Championships, to be able to walk away and say, hey, against the number one team in the world, we held them to a draw. And a scoreless draw at that is going to be something they're going to carry with them for a while. Minimum of 45 seconds left. All that separates the Czech Republic from a historic result. There it is, the final whistle. And so this one ends scoreless between the United States and the Czech Republic. A disappointing evening and a frustrating result for the United States, Julie. Yeah, it's going to be frustrating, but they're going to look at this and say, OK, there were a lot of good things you can take away from this. And the most important thing they want out of this tournament is experience. And that is a growing experience like no other when you go through that as a young player because suddenly you realize, okay, as I said earlier, there is work to be done. And it's going to be a process and it's going to take some time and growth. But with all the possession they had, with all the opportunities they had, that should have been a different scoreline. A lot of credit right there to Vodikova and goal and a really solid Czech defense that just kept battling for 90 minutes. Speaking of the Czech goalie, let's take a look at the impact performance brought to you by Deloitte. It is none other than Barbara Votikova, the goalie for the Czech Republic. That was the Play early, early touch on Sofia Smith. And then she gets another touch here. Rose Lavelle, how many opportunities did she try and slip one by her? And then again, Votikova, Positioning so good, clean on so many of those aerial balls. The PSG starter had a night. Votikova 
eight saves over the 90 minutes. Frustrating the U.S. women's national team in a scoreless draw. Up next for the United States, Sunday against New Zealand from right here at Dignity Health Sports Park in Carson, California. For Julie Fowdy, I'm Sebastian Salazar. Thanks for watching. Coming up next, Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt.